right. Hello and welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? What's popping with you? Oh man, pretty good. Pretty good. A little tired, but you know, can't complain. It's uh it's sunny out here, blue skies. Can't really complain. Yeah. Hey, as long as the sun's out, it's a good day. And we're gonna have a lot more of those days coming forward soon, so it's gonna be kind of nice. Um, today we are bringing episode 43, our I Ain't Doing It For Free episode. So, uh, before we jump into things, guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button, go ahead and like the video, um, but we're going to give you guys some good content for Major League Baseball, and then we'll dive in a little bit with the NFL, uh, before we do some trivia and then wrap up for the day. So, uh, with Major League Baseball, got some things going right now, and this is painful, particularly painful to talk about, uh, out of the gates, but, uh, the Phillies continue to streak and uh ranger suarez listen he's got seven wins he's sporting a 1-5 era and uh you know we're just two weeks into may <laughs> so the, i mean the guy's on pace for 28 wins but al i know through talking with you this sounds a little outlandish why don't you tell us why uh this sounds a little bit outlandish first of all ranger suarez hell of a start to a season well on his way to being named an all-star potentially in a world where he could be the all-star starter for the national league. But um, he's already at 50, what was it like 51 innings mm -hmm. through May, his career high is 155. <laughs> so at, at some point, like workload, like the workload issue might kind of rear its ugly head. So it's just something to look out for as the season kind of progresses. Yeah. And it's, you know, uh, the Braves fan in me wants to say like, yeah, let's get some more innings in him before <laughs> so we can use up all that's in the tank. But uh, me as a baseball fan, I want to see more of him and, and be able to see him stay healthy and, and you know, pitch his way well into the 200s uh, for the Phillies to continue to, to do well. But I mean, Bryce Harper's just smacking the crap out of the ball. Um, yeah, they just they, they got a good squad, man. And it, it's it stinks that they're in the same division as Atlanta because it's a team I want to cheer for, right? Like when you see them play, you're like, man, these guys are awesome. Yeah. It's when the season started, they essentially decided they were just going to run it back pretty much the way they had it the last two seasons. And I was like, all right, like, sure. <laughs> uh, that only gets you so far, but like the way they're hitting the ball right now and pitching, like, honestly, it's smart, like good on them. They yeah. didn't really tinker with the team too much. They have really good team chemistry. Bryce Harper started the season a little slow, but now he's just crushing it. Uh, Trey Turner, Trey Turner, still hitting like three forty. Like they're they just can't be beat right now, man. They just can't be beat. So yeah. they're one, definitely one of the top three teams in baseball right now for certain. So, um, yeah. But let's talk about one of those other potentially top three teams, which I feel like they're looking from the outside in at that top three spot now. Uh, but the Braves, uh, they almost get a no-hitter with Max Freed um, for the second time, right? Like, he's he pitched very well in his last two outings. I mean, stellar in his last two. Um, but the, I, I think out of all of it, right, is the good news that he's actually pitching well because we didn't get to see a lot of that last season. Uh, very nice to be able to see it happen now. Um, but yeah, I just especially, was wondering your thoughts on that. Especially with Strider being hurt. I, I think that's that's key that he's got to – he has to pitch well because they need an ace in that rotation. Mm -hmm. and it's got to be him. And, and he's going to have to stay healthy too. Yeah, I mean, listen, if we're talking about an ace, I mean, I hate to bring it up, but Chris Sale did have a good game against your boys. So it's <laughs> – it must that, have been particularly that was purely a revenge game. That was purely a revenge game. Yeah. When I saw he was starting against us, I was like, "Well, I know how this is going to end." <laughs> yeah, I was but, right. But your boys are, you know, they're keeping their mouth above water, which is a good thing. So, yeah, I suppose they're trying to do what they can. Um, what one thing I wanted to mention because uh, through just talking before you had brought this up, but you know we were talking about Ranger Suarez and his one point five ERA, and you know it's such a big deal and this and that. But you had mentioned that they're the closer for the Yankees, um, very very good this year, uh, sporting a, an even lower <laughs> ERA. Yeah, uh, so the closer for the Yankees right now, Clay Holmes, um, is sporting a zero ERA as twelve saves. Um, in 17 and a third innings. Uh, he's got like something like 21 strikeouts, like 
three walks. Like, mm-hmm. dude is just unhittable right now. Like, and honestly, the the Yankees bullpen is a really key reason why they're hanging neck and neck with Baltimore right now. So yeah, and that division looks tough uh, with with Baltimore and, and the Yankees up top. Uh, I don't feel good for your Red Sox in there because that's just a that's a tough gauntlet to go through to try to make the playoffs. Uh, especially those two teams are loaded. Um, yeah, no, we had no chance, no chances here. That's okay. I knew that. That's okay. Get a chance for free agency, the draft. Get a chance to reload and uh, you know try it again next year. But you could start golfing early. My dad will be happy that's for that. That's cute that you think that free agents want to sign with us. That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's changed a little bit, right? They don't want to spend the money that they did before. Um, yeah. But that's a, that's a tough piece to go through. But sp- sticking with the American League, um, I want to talk about the West right real quick because I feel like that's kind of up for grabs. Looking at the, the way it is right now, obviously you got the Rangers and the Mariners up top, but Oakland is like trying to vie for like, hey, don't send this team away, please. Like we can be good. I don't think it's going to matter, but uh, they are, they, they're not far behind in that division. And I, I just was curious your thoughts on that, if you think it's sustainable or if really the Mariners and Rangers are going to run away with the division. Hey, bud, I think uh, you're I'm muted. Sorry, I was on yeah. mute. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. No, I, a... I want nothing more than Oakland to win this division mm-hmm. just so they can stick it to the ownership. Yeah. I want nothing more than that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's going to happen because they are, honestly, they're not a very good team. Mm-hmm. Like, they are just, they, sorry, the motorcycle going by. Uh, they are just, they're just playing with house money this year. And, they're they're playing as well as they can, and I don't think teams are taking them very seriously. Uh, so I think they're catching a lot of teams off guard. But yeah, man, like I I really want it to be Oakland. I really do. Yeah, it because would Oakland be deserves something good. Yeah, it would be great to see that. Um, yeah, I just you know I I'm curious looking at the standings and stuff. You don't expect uh, you know Houston and Los Angeles to be as you know quite as bad as they are. Um, and kind of seeing that, you know, is that something you see them turning around or, you know, um, I mean, Houston, I feel like has a lot of talent, right? Like it's, yeah, it's too bad that, that they're, they're doing as poorly as they are. Um, LA, no, um, Mm -hmm. just because the one good player they had in Mike Trout is already hurt and he already got knee surgery. So, um, and when Mike Trout was playing, all he could hit was solo home runs for some reason, because nobody else could get on base for that team. So, yeah. uh, yeah. So there's that. Um, I I think with the Astros, like, they're just – look, they've been good for going on, you know, six, seven, eight years now. Like, this – I think they're just, like, they've played a lot of playoff baseball, and I – that's a lot of extra games that they've played, and I think that's kind of catching up with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, yeah. you have guys like Jordan Alvarez who, like, right now just can't can't hit the fucking side of a barn. Yeah, you just can't. Like, it's just tough to watch. So it is a little brutal. Uh, we'll speak about someone that uh, is a lot of fun to watch uh, with these next two guys, right? Uh, Ellie De La Cruz. You know, he's at twenty five stolen bases. He's on pace for over a hundred stolen bases this year. And I'll tell you, like, the only time I've ever seen numbers like that. Uh, we're talking like Kenny Lofton, right? Like how Kenny Lofton, Ricky Henderson, baby. Yeah, yeah. Like obviously Ricky Henderson, a little bit older than Kenny, right? But like it, growing up, I remember being like, man, if if the Braves could get Kenny Lofton on their team, but when they got him, he was already past his prime. He wasn't the Kenny Lofton of the Cleveland Ind- Indians at that time. Uh, but uh, you know, just what this guy's able to do. It, <laughs> it's yeah first of all it looks insane watching him steal a base he's so big uh i don't know for being a big guy it's it's crazy to see someone move that fast and that quick for his size well it's, it's like like you and i like when we watch like lamar jackson play football it doesn't look like he's running very fast mm-hmm. but he's so much faster than everybody else like it just looks like he's running in slow motion yeah and that's what ellie de la cruz is 
um, playing shortstop and like stealing bases. Like he just, he has such a giant lead. And by the time he takes off and the catcher realizes that he's stealing a base, it's too late already. It's too late. Like I personally, like I hope he gets to a hundred steals this year. That hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah. Uh, and I would really like to see that. So yeah, it would be really cool. Well, if there's a guy that that's close to doing it, um, he's definitely on pace. You know, he'll, he'll have to continue up with that pace and it's going to be tough, but uh, would love to be able to see him do it. Um, this next guy for the Pirates, man, like this Rook, he's insane. Like, how do, how do you even, <laughs> how do you even describe how good this kid is? Right? Like, yeah. I saw him on the Pat McAfee show, which was pretty cool. Uh, but, uh, Ska- Skeins? I can't pronounce his name for the life of me. Yeah. I, you know me. I can't pronounce anyone's name. All right. So we're going to go with Paul Skeins for now until uh, we know Dude. differently. Hmm? Yeah. No, he had a he had a solid debut on Saturday. Mm-hmm. He, um, he was, f- for some, like, I hadn't realized. So when the, I read that they were calling him up, I was like, boy, that seems really early. He was just the number one pick in last year's draft. And then I w- looked at his minor league stats, and it, he was just – Crushing he was just it. playing with people in triple a yeah, they're like yeah. well i guess like um he pitched well i i think that like he relied a lot on a fastball which that's great but he's gonna have to v- develop a secondary pitch if he's gonna want to hang around in the majors because respectfully everybody can hit a fastball mm-hmm. um you know you're in the major leagues because you have really good hand-eye coordination um but he pitched well and you know it was nice seeing baseball talk about the pirates in a positive light again <laughs> yeah i know right it's, it's been a minute it's yeah. been a minute i mean you were you were right I, I think he's gonna have to develop much more than just a fastball i mean he he eclipsed the the hundred mile an hour mark 17 times that's that's insane uh to do in one game but uh one interesting thing that i heard about him was he's developed this new pitch and i don't know if it's major league ready or not but he's been working on something called the splinker and it's a sinker and a splitter and kind of like a cross between the two a hybrid and i guess it's very difficult to hit uh but that's what happens when you are that much better than everyone else in triple a you have an opportunity to be able to work on stuff like that yeah. Um, and I, I just think it's, it's going to be great. Great story for the pirates, uh, for yeah. their organization, their fans, they definitely deserve something good. Um, great people. And just, you know, I, I, I wish him the most success in the league to be able to, uh, to go up there against the best, see what he's got. Yeah. And, and it seems like with the pirates, they're trying to like, they're trying to do this the right way and they're trying to rebuild and they're starting to build a young core. Um, it's just going to take some time. You know, mm-hmm. you got the Brewers and the Cubs who are, you know, routinely top of the division. Same with the Cardinals, but it, the Cardinals are honestly kind of falling on tough times. And, like, the Reds are trying to build something. So, like, that whole division in general, I think, in a couple of years, is going to be really fun to watch. So. Yeah, a- absolutely. I, th- I think that's going to be a great one. Um, they could be a lot better. Very, very competitive at that point. Yeah. Um, Was there anything else uh, you want to cover in baseball at all? Um, no, not really. Um, it's just, it's nice having baseball back. Um, it's nice being able to watch some day baseball on Saturdays and Sundays mm-hmm. when I have the time. Um, uh, your Braves really need some bullpen help, man. Yeah. They yeah, really they do. Do. yeah. They, I'm going to keep saying that until they actually get some bullpen help because I watched them on Sunday, Sunday night baseball. They had a three, one lead going into a three, two lead going into the night. Listen, don't, and don't Mitchell, depress me, man. Ninja promptly gave up a two run homer to Brandon Nimmo and it was over before you could blink. Yeah. That's, so. and there's nothing worse than like, I, I hate watching baseball and you get that feeling, especially when you're watching your team, every fan knows it, right? You're watching the game and you're like, listen, like I can just feel like the momentum and the juice is in the opposite direction right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden your guy gives up a home run and you're like, Oh, it, it's, it's over. Uh, very similar to that feeling you have when your team is eliminated from the playoffs in football and you're like, Oh, this hasn't sunk in yet. Um, but yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's uh, better for your team not to make the playoffs. Can't, can't give up. Can't get your heart broken if they don't make the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> right. Oh man. Um, 
All right, so switching gears, we'll we'll hop into the NFL a little bit. Uh, so I was actually wrong last week. I thought the schedule released on May 9th. I don't know where I read that, but I could have sworn it was ESPN. Uh, but it actually releases this week. So the 16th, I think it comes out. Uh, but they did release some interesting information on it. Uh, that Baltimore is playing Kansas City on opening night. Yes, sir. That's going to be a really good game. That is going to be an awesome way to be able to kick off the NFL season. I'm very excited about that. And to know that one of those teams is going to start the season with an 0-1 record. um, Wow. Uh, But just look at the past, right? Kansas City started last year 0-1, and they won the Super Bowl. So... It does look like I, I've kind of like kind of been looking around, and it mm-hmm. seems like there have been like tidbits of it released. It does look like Burrow and Mahomes week two, which that's how. Yeah, could you imagine? And I'm just saying, like, right, like they're the world champs until you beat them. Like they're until you remove the crown. Like they're still the world champs. But like, yeah. could you imagine a world where Kansas City started out zero and two? I mean, they kind of sucked last year for the for a while and we were like man they're not gonna win shit and then here they are and then we watched them in overtime win a super win a super bowl again this is the thing i don't think we're expecting i don't know i think the chargers are going to be better than people think in that division but i don't think that division is going to be as daunting as some of uh, of the other ones and i really think that kansas city is still going to be able to come out on top even if they just win 10 games, they go 10 and yeah. eight and still, still win that division. Um, yeah, well, uh, I guess they'll go 10 and seven, right? At that point, only yeah. 17 games. A couple other things. Um, mm-hmm. Cowboys at Browns that first Sunday, what makes that game intriguing? Uh, Tom Brady's broadcast debut. Oh yeah, I did. He- I did read that. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I guess yeah. we should probably mention that now since you brought him up uh, about, did, did you see the roast of Tom Brady? It's three hours long. Yeah, I don't I, have time to watch a three-hour I, I watched the whole thing, man. And I'll tell you, like, <laughs> it's uh, for those of you at home that have children, uh, make sure they're in bed at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's very interesting, though. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of you're reading the side stories of stuff that came up. Uh, there was a lot of tension, especially between Belichick and Kraft, which was kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. But uh even you know they had made the the comment about craft uh someone had made a comment about him with uh massages hint hint and uh brady went up and and told told the head roaster like hey dude no you're not doing that no more of that he told jeff ross that's who it was jeff ross yeah. hey no more of that so um even at his own roast brady still has control um, which is bull- which, like which is bullshit like you know yeah. what hey you don't want to joke about that maybe don't get caught getting handies from uh, masseuses i don't know yeah like, i know crazy. yeah um interesting um, also, also uh the last game that i did see that they're playing so aaron Rodgers playing monday night again week one will he last more than four snaps against the san francisco 49ers defense we have to hope oh my god they're playing the 49ers in the first <laughs> week oh yeah yeah. My goodness. Uh, like, okay, so I understand the NFL. They love this and stuff. But, like, you have to know you're running a senior citizen out there against Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. Like, yeah. my goodness, that's going to be, wow. Um, That's going to be yep. an action-packed week one. Really yeah. will be. Man. Yeah, also, that Burrow-Mahomes game is going to be in, in Kansas City week two. Yeah, in Kansas City. Okay, so that Burrow yeah. doesn't care. He'll play in the parking lot if they need to. Yeah. But for, for Kansas City, though, for them, that's a grueling opening two weeks of that schedule. Like, Yeah, it definitely is. It's cool. very, very difficult for them. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be neat to see the rest of it once it all sneaks out and – then we can look at it and kind of then you get the forecast of what you know how teams are going to finish and all of that stuff. Oh, I got a lot of research to do on that. So yeah, no, I'm excited mm-hmm. next week to just essentially spend a whole episode talking about the schedule release and like yeah. games that we're really hyped for. Yeah, so. I'm, I can't wait to look through it. So um, so some things in free agency that came up because I think there were some signings, uh, some minor signings, but some big ones that I really noticed, and one of them. Uh, and I know some people will laugh about this, but Bud Dupree, 
Um, first of all, you probably remember him for, and I can't remember the Dolphins quarterback, uh, what his name was, but in the playoffs, uh, he ran over to the sideline and to like attempt to go out of bounds and Bud Dupree lit him up when he played for the Steelers. Like you've never seen a quarterback get lit up, uh, in their entire life. And that guy's a monster. And the reason that they said he signed with the Chargers um, was because they're going to put him in a lot of three-man sets with Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack rushing the passer. So Ooh. I think oh, that, yeah, that could be very good. And especially Harbaugh, like, he knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah. It could be very dangerous for people um, playing the Chargers. I'm excited for the Chargers to lose a lot of 13-10 games this season. I'm really excited for that. Listen, I... I I think they're going to be better on offense. I think they're going to get back to running the ball. They, you know, they go after another tackle. So they're going to give uh, Justin Herbert some protection and stuff. But Khalil Mack quietly had like one of his best seasons last year. And I know people think he's old and he's aging and all of that. I'll tell you, you add another talented playmaker on that defense. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, it frees other guys up to be able to make plays. I just, I don't know. I think they're going to be better than people people think and that's even with losing the guys that they've lost like keenan allen eckler mike williams they've got a new identity on that team and it's not going to be justin herbert throwing the ball 50 times a game uh, they're going to try to run the ball play vicious defense and see what happens yeah. um and i think that like i said i think they're going to surprise people i don't want to say anything yet but i think they could finish second in the division and possibly sneak into the playoffs I hate to say that but uh, there's a possibility Ooh. of that. So um, another signing that we had, Rashad Penny, he signs with Carolina. So they've got 14 running backs in their backfield now. Yep. Um, but only three downs to get a first, you know, they have four downs to get a first down. So they can yeah. really only run four of them. I mean, yeah. why give it to you? Why put it in your quarterback's hands who you gave up two first round picks for, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, maybe he'll be able to provide some something that Miles Sanders and uh, you know uh, Chuba Hubbard and some of the other guys aren't aren't able to. Um, you know what? This is some hot fantasy advice right now. Draft all the Carolina running backs. Just draft them all. Yeah, can't yeah. go wrong. Get them can't all. Wrong. They're gonna start so one of them. That's my lock of the season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speak about fantasy. A guy that may actually have some relevance this year. Zay Jones uh, signs with yeah. Arizona. Um, which I, I really like that. Like some of the other teams he was visiting, I think Dallas and Pittsburgh, I could be wrong yeah. about Pittsburgh, but Dallas, I know he was definitely visiting and he signed with Arizona, which gives them a nice third option at wide receiver. But in my mind, I think it's going to be their second option. They've got Harrison jr. There obviously is the first Michael Wilson, who they is, you know, before this signing was the wide receiver too. Um, yeah. but I could see Zay Jones overtaking that and have the ability to, to step in there. And like, don't forget, they've got that stud Trey McBride, uh, Mr. 14 catch catches every game, uh, yeah. at tight end. I mean, that guy's an absolute monster. So yeah. I think Arizona could be better this year too. If Arizona could play any sort of defense, like they're going to be, they're going to be a, they're going to be a tough team this year. Yeah. So. I I'll tell you after watching their GM and w- knowing what their coach does, uh, how he's, how he's trying to build a good culture there. I really want them to be successful. I really Me do. Too. Um, uh, last uh, one of the last signings that we had, uh, Lucas Patrick. Um, so he was the Bears starting center for about 15 games over the past two years. So about half the seasons, right? Uh, but he signs with the Saints. It's kind of a depth signing that they have where he's played a little bit at guard in the past. He's had, um, you know, center, uh, obviously as well. But I, I really think that's going to help kind of bolster that line a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's really game changing for them. But having good depth on your offensive line, especially a guy with experience, uh, that matters. Um, yeah, anything to get, get anything to have card maybe take one less sack a game, you know. Yeah, or it's just yeah. another guy he could fight with possibly. So you know, you gotta you gotta protect Captain Checkdown at all costs. <laughs> all right, so some actually some better news too, right? Uh, Trey Hendrickson from Cincinnati, uh, their monster defensive end. 
Um, yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but he actually um, he requested a trade earlier in the off season. Sure did. And he and Higgins did as well, wasn't yep. it? Higg- was it? Higgins. Yeah. I don't know who did it first. I think Higgins did first, and then Hendrickson followed shortly after. I could be wrong about that, but um, he's back in the building, which is a very good sign for that defense. Um, and I don't know if it's that Cincinnati won't budge type deal, or if it's just that, uh, you know, he, he's like, Hey, listen, I'm under contract. I've got business to do. I'm going to do business. So, um, really happy to see him back there because there's some guys that, that can definitely learn from him, um, that they've drafted. So, uh, your favorite news of the day, right? Ooh, uh, boy. Yeah, you're you're made. you're absolute boy, Jared Goff. We got to get you a Jared Goff mask. Um, but yeah, so he gets a very lucrative contract, right? Uh, and the reason I'm not going to give the full numbers on it, like it, it's an extension, but he gets 170 million guaranteed, and that's really the number that that you should be looking at as a yeah. as a I guess a football fan, right? Because that's the one that kind of matters. Um, it, it, they, they could give him a $400 million contract, but what is the guaranteed money on it? Right. Um, what are they yeah. going to owe him? And in this and case, the contract, yeah. The, yeah, the contract, if he hits all his incentives and stuff is, uh, the values 212 million. Yeah. Which is insane. Either way, our boy got paid. Good yeah, he Jared did. Bob. And, and they've spent, you know, almost half a billion dollars this off season on that offense alone, uh, locking yeah. down Amon Ra. Panay Sewell, and now Jared Goff. So those three are definitely going to be together at least the next four years, um, which I think is is amazing. That is great to have both of them there. Um, and you also know, you know, Jameer Gibbs is going to be there during that time too, right? Because he yeah. was just drafted last year. Uh, so you're going to have a very solid offense. Oh, Sam Laporta too. Um, yeah. So very good to have those guys together for that long. I'm just curious your thoughts on that, whether, you know, deserving, not deserving, anything like that. Honestly, the way, like, the Rams kind of did golf dirty. Like, I get it. Like, they they were like, hey, we loved you, but, like, we don't think that you're good enough. So we're going to trade for Detroit's quarterback who, you know, I get it. They won a Super Bowl with him. Cool. But, like, Goff clearly has found a home in Detroit. The city loves him. He loves playing for Detroit. I like honestly, that's a win-win for everybody involved. Yeah. And it kind of we we talked about earlier about building a core. That's what Detroit's doing. They're building a core. They're building a core, and they're like, hey, we're going to have a good line, solid quarterback, a number a, one of the best receivers in the league, and we're going to play smash mouth football, and we're going to punch you in the mouth, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, you, you know what's interesting of, about that, and I, I kind of equate it to the same, uh, a similar situation, not quite as messy, but more backstabby, is um, what happened to Jared Goff with the way he was kind of removed from L.A., but like more dramatic, but less backstabby was the Baker Mayfield situation, right? But both yeah. have found new homes where they've had success, found good success, and also found locker rooms that love them. And yep. that's, uh, I mean, I, I know we, we could sit up here and judge these guys on Sunday and stuff. And clearly we're just as good as they are sitting in the chairs we are. Right. But that would say even better. Yeah. Maybe even better. Right. Cause I could make all the throws, but it's good to be able to see them have success because they are human beings at the end of the day. And, you know, I'm very happy for Jared Goff. Love cheering for that guy. I really do. I hope they're able yeah. to get over the mountaintop. So, um, Another guy that got paid, right? Antoine Winfield becomes the highest paid defensive back with a four-year, $81 million deal, $45 million included. Now, the only thing, only issue I have with this before I get to your thoughts on it, um, you're guaranteeing a lot of money to a safety. Not a lockdown corner. Not a Jalen Ramsey, Denzel Ward, Patrick Sertan the second, right? You're giving that money to a safety, which is a lot of money to be able to give out. I just don't like it. I think he's a great player. Don't get me wrong. Like really I do. I just think it's too much. Like he got hosed that he should have been a pro bowler last year. Yeah. He had a monster season last year. Mm -hmm. Um, And he kind of, he's really the reason that defense kind of ticks. 
So I, I'm actually I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. I, especially with safeties, like if you're a really good safety, you're essentially the quarterback of the defense. Right. Yeah. Or, like you see everything, you see the whole field, and you're kind of the last line of defense. Right. A lot of times. He did he still- definitely got snubbed last year. That's definitely right. I just I don't know. In in my mind, I feel like that's just so much money to pay. That's usually lockdown corner money, but you know, it's a different day and age in the NFL, right? So yeah. um, you got to be able to lock down guys like that or else you end up seeing them leaving free agency. And the last thing you want to do is see him go to New Orleans or Atlanta or Carolina and then crush you two games a year all season, right? Like that's that right. would be awful. So, And, and really for Tampa, they, they kind of had to do it because they, they want to keep the core of that defense together. Yeah, Like they built on something kind of special last year and I – I think they want to kind of keep continuing with that. And I, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I like it. I, I, I'm with you. I, I think that's a lot of guaranteed money, but in the grand scheme of things, if you're getting somebody like him, who is a pretty high caliber player, that's fine. Yeah. And you, you're also not paying Baker $50 million a year. So no, they got Baker at a steal. Frankly. Yeah, so, like, so there's other money you have on the table. Um, yeah which is nice. One minor thing I wanted to mention about Tampa Bay, and I I feel like this goes under the radar, but uh, I'm a big Chris Godwin fan. I've liked him ever since he got into the league. I thought when Brady was there with him, I thought he was brilliant, right? Like I I knew what the situation he was getting. He was getting a massive upgrade at quarterback when Brady went there. Um, And his statistics showed that, right? Yeah, he got banged up a a little bit during the seasons, but uh, he's been a very good player, very reliable, and a very, very good receiver in the time in in the league. Uh, But they just announced they're moving him back to the slot, which I think is the best possible thing they can do for him. Um, He's not an outside receiver. He's brilliant over the middle, running slants, uh, hooks, crosses all of those i just think um even the drags i mean he can run every route on the tree but i just think he does a better job from the slot Uh, honestly and i think too what that's going to do is that's going to open up evans even more Mm -hmm. because especially if you put the two of them on the same side good luck yeah like good luck okay yeah or even like as a decoy like sometimes they did this a little bit last year where they would put godwin on the outside and then evans and as a slot receiver and that was just that was just dumb because like every time evans played slot receiver nobody could cover him right i mean nobody can cover him regardless but yeah. like that that's just a, like an added unfair advantage yeah it definitely is well so. i know uh i know we're going to be talking about the schedule next week which is gonna be great like i can't wait yeah. maybe we'll have some more signings in the meantime uh for that but uh anything else you want to cover on the nfl no i think that's it all right yeah man. well we could jump into our trivia question that we had the uh question last week you had mentioned with the news from oakland uh that they're going to be relocating to vegas uh which team was the last one to relocate yeah uh you know pour one out montreal expos uh they moved to washington in 05 yeah Man, yeah, those expo a lot games. of games in that old expo park, man. Yeah, me too. My dad, I remember, I remember crying in the car when he surprised me with tickets to a Braves game up there. I was so happy, yeah. man. Got Tony Gwynn's auto- autograph in that stadium. Made a big sign for Chipper Jones in in one of the games. Like it was. Yeah. I saw a lot of teams play up there. It was really, really cool. So yeah, R.I.P. Um, you be the mascot, man. Man, one of the best. Yeah, one man. Of the best. Like it was just such an awesome trip going up there too, man. It's uh yeah. something that I wish people could experience, but I I almost get that feel sometimes when I go to like foreign um, stadiums here. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not for football, uh, uh, or rather their soccer games that they have here because those are insane and very intense. Um, yeah, but. Uh, going to like low level, um, low level sports that they have it, you get that same type of feel, uh, like you're in Montreal. But anyhow, also, any Montreal, Montreal is just a great like, is a great city in general. Like it I, really it's is. one of my favorite cities. Yeah, good people, good culture, everything yeah. like that. Good food, good beer. Yeah. yeah. Now we get now we can enjoy the beer, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right. You got another trivia question for them for this week or? I do. Yeah. Um, okay. Since we were talking about stolen bases earlier and maybe L.A. De La Cruz getting to 100, mm-hmm. uh, who is the last player to steal 100 bases in a season? Oh. And I will give you a hint. It's not Ricky Henderson. Oh. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, that one, make sure you go ahead and drop it in the comments below. We'll make sure that we answer it next week for you guys. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this week, right? We're going to have much more coming in the next few weeks, this summer, all the stuff that we've got as training camps start up. Um, oh, well, they even before that, they've got uh, off-season workouts and all of that stuff to to be able to get into. But um, real excited as baseball picks up, too. We're, you know, two months away from the All-Star break, which is kind of nice. So Yeah, wild. Yeah, going to be a lot of fun. So uh, anything that uh you you wanted to cover before we we close no that's per, that's pretty much it you know like i said baseball we're deep in it football i'm really excited for that schedule we'll release to yeah. really break that down next week that's gonna be a lot of fun it definitely will be man yeah. all right well listen bro i love you thanks again for another one and uh we'll see you guys next week yeah i love you stay safe peace peace <laughs>